Good morning. Welcome to Beacon Light Missionary Baptist Church's virtual service. I'm Pastor Clarence Burke, and we're so happy to have you all here and to and just to celebrate the Lord on this first Sunday in December. Let's start off with a word of prayer. Father, I thank you. I thank you, Lord, for just blessing us with the opportunity to continue to meet, to continue to commune with one another, to continue, Lord, to celebrate you, Lord. Although it be virtually, we are satisfied whereas we're two or three gathered together in your name, you are certainly in the midst and we thank you for that, Father. Father, we just ask that you take control of this service, Lord, and we just pray that you bless it and help us, all of those who are, are, are sharing during this service and those who are watching and listening. We pray this prayer in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We'll start off with a selection by Sister Phyllis Morrison. Praise the Lord, everybody. This song simply comes to remind us that God is truly worthy. He's holy. He's precious. He's all of that, especially during this season of Advent as we prepare to celebrate the, the birthday, the coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Sometimes we just need to be reminded of how holy and wonderful God truly is.
Sister Morris, and you're certainly right. Holy is the Lamb of God. Let's just meditate on that for a moment, that how holy and awesome God is. And as we are in the month of December, the month that we celebrate the birth of Christ and celebrate Christmas, let us remember to keep Christ in Christmas. Keep Christ in the season. Today we're coming from Mark chapter five. The fifth chapter of Mark. And we're gonna talk about someone who was tortured and demonized, but they were delivered by Jesus. And our focus today is on the response of one who has been delivered by Jesus. Allow me to read a few verses from just ch this chapter. Ch Mark chapter five, starting at the 15th verse. Then they came to Jesus and saw the one who had been demon possessed and had the legion sitting and clothed in his right mind. And they were afraid. And those who saw it told them how it happened to him who had been demon possessed and about the swine. Then they began to plead with him to depart from their region. And when he got into the boat, he who had been demon possessed begged him that he might be with them. However, Jesus did not permit him but said to him, go home to your friends and tell them what great things the Lord has done for you and how he has had compassion on you. And he departed and began to proclaim in Decapolis all that Jesus had done for him and all marveled. The topic for today is tell them about great things tell them about Jesus. Again, tell them about great things. Tell them about Jesus. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. I thank you, Lord, for just blessing us with the opportunity to be together once again, Father. And I just pray that, Lord, you be with me as I share this word. In your son Jesus' name I pray. Amen men. Now, during this time, sometimes the greatest gift we can give anybody is our testimony about what God has done for us. You know, we might not be able to give them monetary gifts or other type of gifts, some material gifts, but we can tell them about the real reason for the season. Now, let's set the stage about what's going on. Jesus had been preaching near the Sea of Galilee, teaching in chapter four and sharing. And then he got on the boat to go to the other side of the Sea of Galilee. And the word tells us that as they went to the other side, that's when that storm came up and Jesus was asleep. He was asleep and they were fearful. 
And Jesus got up and calmed the storm and, 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 just, and just questioned their faith. And when they, when they got to the other side, on the east side of the Sea of Galilee, they found the individual, a man who had been demon possessed for years, who was living in the tombs. He had lost his family. He had lost his home. He had lost his, his decency. He had lost everything. And he lived like a madman among the tomb areas of that part of the country. Now, now, now society could not help this man because they kept trying to keep him bound up in chains and things like that. But even chains could not hold him because the demon inside of him was so strong that they broke the chains. So, so, so society could not help this man. So they put him in isolation and they tried to keep him away from everybody else. But where society can fail, we have a savior who can take care of us. We have a savior who can deliver us. Society will avoid certain people. Now that's how we are. We will avoid certain people because of how they act, because of what they're doing. We will avoid them. We will not engage them. But Jesus took the time to talk to this individual. Jesus took the time to, 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 to interact with this individual. And Jesus took the opportunity to deliver this man from the satanic hold upon his life. Now, a man was asked, what is your name? And the man said, my name is Legion. That meaning that's how many demons were inside of this man, controlling this man's life. That's what made the man so physically strong and deranged because of the demons within him. Now, if you look at the, the Roman term for legion, when you look at their military term, that's like 6,000 troops. So that's a whole lot of demons that were inside this man that afflicted this man. So what Jesus did, Jesus cast out the demons into the swine that were nearby. And the word tells us there was over 2,000 uh, pigs that were nearby. And the demon went into the pigs and the pigs ran and jumped off the cliff and into the sea. They were destroyed. But this man was saved. This man came and broke the bonds of Satan upon this individual. The savior came through the storm for this man. And you know what? He'll come through our storms if we allow him to. I just want to share three points with you, and I'll tell you the three points up front in case I forget them later. Number one, there was a compassionate plea from the recipient of great things. There was a compassionate plea from the recipient of great things. Number two, there was a command from Jesus to share great things. There was a command to share great things. And number three, there was a commitment to proclaim the great things. So as we look at this man, those are the points I want to lift up today. The question is, what is our reaction when the Lord has blessed us? What is our reaction when the Lord has blessed us? So here this man is delivered. Here this man is in his right mind. Here is this man who, who people had stayed away from, but yet he is normal. And, 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 and the people who were around when this happened, they shared what had happened. And, and they shared what had happened. And, and Jesus, it was now time for Jesus to leave, to get back on the boat. He came and he had done what he was supposed to do at that time. He had delivered the person he needed to deliver. We never know when deliverance will come, but we do know that deliverance will come. Amen? We do know that. So, so as Jesus was getting on the boat to go back to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, in verse 18, this man who was demon, who had been demon possessed. Now think about that, had been, that's past tense. We like to remember people how they used to be. But you know, sometimes we need to just put away how people used to be and look at them as they are now. He had been demon possessed, begged him that he might be with them. So this man who had been delivered, this man who had been demon possessed for years, this man who had been on the outskirts of society, this man who had been ignored by society was now delivered and he saw the power of God through Jesus and he wanted to be with Jesus. He begged him, this was a compassionate plea from the recipient of great things. When great things have happened to you, don't we, 
Don't we just want to rejoice? Don't we just want to just tell everybody about it? Don't we just want to just bask in the glory of the deliverance, whether it's been deliverance through good news, good news we find on our job. You know, we have those times in our jobs where we get those Christmas bonuses that we did not expect and, 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 and we just receive something. It just makes us feel so good. And we want to tell somebody, you know, times we come back from the doctor with a, with a good report, you know, that if, if you're like me, the day before you go to the doctor, you're kind of anxious, you know, you kind of say, oh Lord, what, what they gonna find now? Let me, let me make sure I eat right today. Let me make sure I do this and do everything I need to today so I can get these tests right. And, and then when you come back and you see the test, then you have, you have good news. You just wanna share uh, that good news with everything, but just think about it. The person who has been demon possessed for years, who has not been in his right mind is now being delivered. And he knows who has delivered him. So this man had been full of the devil. How do we act when the Lord blesses us with deliverance? So the man came and begged Jesus to be with him, a reasonable request. But look at what Jesus did in verse 19. He said, however, Jesus did not permit him, but said to him, go home to your friends and tell them what great things the Lord has done for you and how he has had compassion on you. The command from Jesus was to share the good news, was to share the great things. Jesus said, no, you're not to be with me, but you need to go home and tell your people what has happened to you. Tell your people who have heard of your condition, who have seen your suffering, tell them how you were healed. Tell them that it was not some medicine, but it was the power of God. Tell them, go home to your friends and tell them what great things the Lord has done for you. You know, we like to tell people what the Lord has done for us. And we, we get up during our, our prayer time and, and share our prayer requests and our praise reports and, and, and tell the great things that the Lord has done for us. And it, it will not be the magnitude of what has happened to this man, but you know we might have been delivered from a car accident. We might have been the, spared from sickness or storms, the storms of life, and, and we want to tell somebody. Isn't that the way we are? When, when something's good has been done for us, we want to tell somebody. When, 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 when we get an unexpected blessing, we want to tell somebody. We, we just got to share it with somebody. We, and in today's, you know, with the pandemic and stuff, we can't we can't be going over people's houses and, and sit around, sit for hours and tell them about the great things that has happened in our lives. But we get on the phone and we, we go on social media and we tell the great things that has happened to us. It is human nature to tell great things, regardless of how small it is or how big is it, it is. It is human nature to tell somebody. We just can't wait to get home and tell somebody. You remember when we were in school and we got those good grades on those tests and we just wanted to run home and tell somebody and tell our parents or whoever, I did good on this test. And for some of us, when we hit that big sale, like on days designated as Black Friday, we just wanna tell somebody, look how much I saved. I wanna tell somebody what a discount I got, what a bargain I got, what a good thing I got. I wanna tell somebody how a little bit of money stretched and bought a whole lot of stuff. We wanna tell somebody. And, we, and when we hear good news about somebody else and how God has blessed somebody else, we just wanna tell somebody. Jesus wanted this man to tell everybody about his deliverance, the great things. Notice he said, tell them what great things the Lord has done for you. Not what you've done yourself, but what the Lord has done for you and how he has had compassion on you great things. He was healed. The demons were cast out. And, and you know what? When the news travels, 
News travels fast when great things have been done. All we have to do is look at the healings that uh, Jesus did in Mark chapter 3. And in Mark chapter 3, verse 8, it said, Then the people came from all around to see Jesus what, when they had heard of the great things he had done. When great things are done, people hear about it. And people want to relate to the great things. But just to tell the great thing about how he had compassion uh, on you, not because of what the individual did, but because of what God did. Compassion, 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 that, that type of, of thing that we don't deserve sometimes, but yet we still get a compassion. And I'm thinking about looking at Romans 5, 8, where it says, but God commended his love towards us, that while we were still yet sinners, Christ died for us. He died for us even in the midst of our sinfulness to save us, to save somebody who needed Jesus, to save somebody who needed compassion on their lives. This is a season where we try to have compassion on others. We try to take care of the needs of others. We try to take care of the desires of others because this is a difficult time and we need to have compassion on others. Those who have resources, we need to share with others. But God had compassion on this individual. It is interesting, as I was making my tea this morning, on my tea bags, they have inspirational messages sometimes, and, and half the time they don't really mean much, but today's, today's little tag on my tea, here's what it says. It says, compassion is the state of constant giving of the self for others. Let me say that one more time. Compassion is the state of constant giving of the self for others. And I thought that was so appropriate that, you know, half the time I don't even look at what the tea bag says. But today I looked and I said, oh my God, maybe that's confirmation about this message today. But compassion, God had compassion on each and every one of us if we think about it. We do not deserve what we have and not this relationship with God, but it's through His grace and His mercy and His compassion that we do have it. And if we look at the Old Testament, we see different names for God, how he has had compassion and how he has blessed us. We will hear sermons and people talk about Jehovah Jireh, which means the Lord is the Lord. He is my provider. He will provide enough for me. We also have other names for God in the Old Testament. We have Jehovah Ropha, which means the Lord is our healer. He gives spiritual healing. He gives physical healing. We hear of Jehovah Shalom. The Lord is our peace is what that means. He will give us peace even in the midst of our storms. Jehovah Nisa, the Lord is our banner. He will lift you up. And in last month's series about David, we see that David was certainly lifted up by the Lord. We need to tell somebody. You remember the song that's sung in church sometime. It's not sung as much as it used to be, but go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ was born. Our job is to tell somebody. Our job is to give our personal testimony. Our job is the witness of the, of the great things that the Lord has done for us. Even when we do that, some, will still remember us of how we used to be, what we used to do, who we used to hang out with, the trouble we used to get into. Some will continue to remember that, but our job is to show people that I am a new creation. I am born again because I have a relationship with my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So therefore, when I come telling you about the great things, it is because the Lord has had compassion on me. He has had mercy towards me and he has extended grace towards me. Let's look at the 20th verse of Mark 5. It says, and he departed. This man departed. He was obedient. And look what he did. He departed and began to proclaim in Decapolis all that Jesus had done for him and all marveled. Now, now this is the third point I want to lift up the commitment to proclaim the great things. Now, there's a few places, things I want to explain for you. Decapolis. 
the capitalists, that was on the east side of the Sea of Galilee where Jesus was. And, and that was a, a sort of state, a collection of 10 cities uh, made up to the capitalists. B means uh, 10 and, and Cap and list means cities, something like that. But you know, it's just he he made a commitment that to do what Jesus told him, and he departed and began to proclaim in the capitalists all that Jesus had done for him, and it says all marveled, great things Jesus had done for him. Think about it. Here was a man who had been on the outskirts of society for so many years because he was demon possessed. Now he was healed. Now he could walk among the people. Now he could look at them in the eyes and they would not be scared of him. Children would not cross the street when they saw him coming down because of what they had heard about this man. He had been completely healed. You know, we need to remember that God is still in the healing business. God is still in the compassionate business. And there are people being healed today, people that we looked down on in previous times. We need, to, we, we need to remember that just the same Jesus that saved us is the same Jesus that is still working through all mankind. So this man went through the cities and he proclaimed the great things that Jesus had done for him. And I just wanna share with you some great things that Jesus had done for him. When G, when, and, and these are things that Jesus is doing for each and every one of us. I'm reminded of Luke chapter 8, verse 27. I was naked and didn't have a home, but now I'm clothed in my right mind. He's clothed in his right mind. Uh, 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 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, what is he? He is a new creation. He is a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. The second thing about this, this man had an unclean spirit, but now he has a clean spirit. Psalm 51.10 says, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit in me. He has had his heart sanitized. He has had his heart cleansed. You know, we live at a time where, where we have a, a new respect for uh, sanitizing things, amen? We have an, a healthy respect for making sure that things are kept clean, things that we ignored previous times, things that we did not worry about. Now we wanna make sure that, have I washed my hands? Have, have, I, have I washed off anything that might be on my hands that might be unclean. And we take extra precautions about keeping ourselves clean. We are met wearing masks to keep ourselves clean. We are restricting our movement to keep ourselves clean. We are, are, are being careful how we entertain packages that are delivered to our house to keep ourselves clean. We, are, we have a special relationship now with cleanliness that we did not have. Just think about it. Just think about what we're doing now that we did not used to do. But think about the cleanliness that comes from a cleansing of the heart. Think about the cleanliness that comes from a, clean, a relationship with God who has changed everything, who has made old things pass and behold, all things are new. A renew a right spirit in me. You cannot, we cannot, tell everybody or somebody about what he's done without telling him who he is, amen? We can tell people what God has done, but we need to tell him who he is. And in this season of Advent, in this, this season of where we celebrate Christmas, we need to remember that God is Emmanuel, which means that God is with us. He is Jesus, our savior. He has rescued us from harm and danger. He is Jesus, the Christ. Christ means Messiah, the anointed one. He is the good shepherd. He leads me. He is the redeemer. He purchased my life. 2,000 years ago, God did a great thing for us. He sent his son, his only son, to, to be the satisfaction for the whole world. We need to tell somebody. The great commandment that Jesus gave to his disciples in Matthew chapter 8, verse 19, 
said, go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. That is still our commandment today, to tell somebody about the great things that the Lord has done to us. There's another hymn I think about when I relate, when I think about great things and sharing great things. There's a hymn called, I Love to Tell the Story of unseen things above, of Jesus and his glory, of Jesus and his love. I love to tell the story because I know it is true. It satisfies my longings as nothing else can do. Tell somebody about Jesus. Tell somebody about the real reason for the season and tell somebody what he's done for you. Tell somebody what he's done for you. Amen. God bless you. Three verses about an individual whose life had been changed through the power of God, through Jesus Christ, and his devotion to sharing with anybody who would listen what had happened and how it happened. He was not ashamed, but he went and told it. God bless you. And I pray that this message has inspired and informed about the need to tell somebody about the great things the Lord has done for us. Amen. Even if the preacher doesn't preach
Even if the quiet doesn't see 